Welcome back to Pickens Party 5. Today we're going to be installing a cargo enclosure. Let's get to it. Today we are installing the Ford Accessories cargo enclosure with a raised lid. And the best part to this, it was free. Yes, we bought it with our Ford Pass points from when we purchased our truck and the Bronco. And if you were a reservation holder, a Bronco reservation holder, you should have received an extra 20,000 bonus points, which we did not get right away. I had to call Ford, but they did apply it. And voila, I was able to buy this. Just to note, this is our third time recording this video. The first time we had a corrupt file, and then the second time we had a corrupt file and the lighting was terrible. So here we are, third time is a charm. This should go really fast. It should, it's gonna be really easy, yeah. <laughs> no matter what, it's a very easy install. You need three sockets, a 10 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, and a 9 16 And that's it, it's an easy installation. So let's get started. So one thing to note, we have our soft top back. Um, you would actually want to have your top up in normal closed position, uh, but we want to have some lighting in here so it makes the visuals better uh, because all the black interior and black panels, black cargo, it just kind of all blends together. So we have the top back. It's going to be a little bit of a nuisance for me, but it will make the video come through clear. When you install yours, have the top closed. Let's go inside real quick and, and take a look. We are going to install the cargo area enclosure with these panels removed. These pop off. There are just five clips on the back. Pull it straight out. We would like to have access to these three bolts on both sides. That way we can remove the entire soft top assembly this winter. Uh, with the cargo area enclosure installed, we won't be able to do that with these panels in place. Um, and then next, there is an aux wire right around in here, this location, it's, I believe it's a yellow wire. It runs and it just ends here. This is actually for your upfitter switches if you have them, or if you don't have upfitter switches, it's still pre-wired. You may wanna run an extension from this wire up through here in case you would like to access that without removing your, your entire cargo area enclosure in the future. So step one is gonna be to remove this plastic panel here that covers your tow hook are your tie down bolts. This just lifts up. And away, up and away. So you no longer need these. We're gonna store them in case we ever want them in the future. There are two 10 millimeter bolts here. We'll pop those out. With this installation, you no longer need these. The install kit actually comes with longer bolts. We'll show you why here in a moment. Again, we're gonna keep these just in the future in case we ever wanna put this back to normal, back to stock. The next step is to take these spacers that come with the kit and put them over your bolt holes. Okay. And then we'll assemble a sidewall. Okay, the sidewall is made up of three parts. You have the actual wall itself, you have a seat back mounting brace, and then you have the rear brace here. The way these are going to go inside of the wall, and you can see it lines up perfectly here, and then you have these squared off bolt holes. For the back, there is a tapered mounting bracket that will go here and it aligns perfectly with the taper on the back of the wall panel. To put this together, you don't need any tools. Use these bolts from the back. Washer. And then a hand tightened nut. Okay, this is the driver's side. I wanna point out a few things. Uh, it has a nice rubber stripping. I'm not sure if this is actually weather stripping, but it definitely protects your interior panel. 
and also prevents any metal on metal noise. There's also an access panel here. This would be for if you have a hard top and you want to route your hard top electronics and washer fluid hose through the top of this. Let's go ahead and put this in. And as we mentioned earlier, we're leaving these access panels off so we can still reach down to these bolts to take off the soft top assembly. So we're gonna use these new supplied 13 millimeter bolts and the original tie downs to install the sidewall. Ford actually recommends using a torch wrench to install these, I believe at 18.5 pounds of pressure. I do not have a torch wrench handy, so I'm gonna use my best judgment here, but I would suggest you do follow the recommendations by Ford. Okay, so same exact process for the passenger side. A few differences, there's no access panel on top, but there's a larger opening here for your either your storage compartment or your B&O sub, I believe, is here. You also have access to your 12 volt and your LED lighting. Now we'll move on to the seat back panel that will fit in place here. This is engineered to fit nearly perfectly. The instructions call for a rubber strip to run along the top of this. I couldn't find it in our uh, shipping materials, so we won't have that right now, but uh, I'll go back and just double check. And uh, if not, we may need to call uh, Ford and let them know that we're missing that piece. As you can see, I still have not fully installed our sub wiring. Uh, I'm just afraid I don't want to drill through the plastic panels in this car yet. So right now I have it temporarily wired here. It's kind of tucked in next to the seat. And just to double check, the Base Pro Go does fit through the Molly panel here. I strapped the base knob here for now. So to install this, there'll be a brace. The brace has a like an L channel. It actually points toward the interior and it has a taper at the bottom. This will be the driver's side. So we'll go here and it sandwiches the rear panel to the rear wall, the driver's side wall. This is installed using a bolt with a large metal washer that will go through all three panels. And then you use these access holes to reach the back of the bolt. This is where you'll need your 916 socket. I would use a deep socket so you can actually access that very easily. One important item that I've learned is to be very careful not to drop your nut or washer because it will land down here where it's very difficult to reach, especially in this area. So I would recommend not over tightening the top here until you have your bottom bolt in, just so you can get everything aligned. The bottom has a little bit less access and it makes it a little easier to lose your washer or your bolt or your nut. The process is the exact same on the passenger side. Again, you'll notice a taper here and how this points towards the interior. One thing that we did not expect that we noticed when we did this installation is the amount of space behind the rear seat. So that's probably three and a half, maybe close to four inches in some places. You can also still recline the rear seat and still have a lot of space near the bottom. 
and about an inch at the top. So that allows us to have access to install accessories, maybe like a first aid kit on the interior side of the Bronco. The rear seat back panel is installed. We have two more bolts left to hold in the pivot points for the top. And let's go uh, see if we can get that top installed. So with the hard top in place, we'll actually install this plastic bushing and then last two bolts, one on each side and a washer. Driver side panel, plastic bushing, washer, metal washer and the bolt. Again, these are 13 millimeter. I'm gonna wait to tighten this down all the way until I have the passenger side in. Do not wanna over tighten these because it will limit your, restrict your access to the opening and closing of your top. Yeah, I mean, you have to compress this strut, pop it in there, and do the same on the other side. <laughs> After doing that, that's the third time I learned a couple tricks. <laughs> like and subscribe. All right. That's the installation. It's actually, again, very simple. Uh, no drilling, which is great. Uh, there are a couple of drawbacks with the soft top and this cargo enclosure. One of them is if you put this up first with the brace in place, you actually cannot open your top. So you have to make sure that you get in the habit of almost opening them together. And then now you can actually put the stick down to hold it up. This is your access in and out of your trunk space. You do lose a little bit on the sides. We'll measure that in just a second. Now say you wanted to carry something in your trunk space that was this tall, or maybe even your, your doors, you would have to uninstall this whole unit. You can uninstall everything in about 15 minutes. It doesn't actually take too long. I wouldn't want to do it often. So I've uninstalled this twice in the last two days and I would not want to have to uninstall this on a regular basis. It's not hard, it takes about 12, 15 minutes. But again, once you have it installed, you want to leave it installed. If you were in a pinch and you wanted to carry something that was this tall in the back, you can remove the lid by taking off those two bolts there and there and then the struts again not something you want to do on a regular basis but you can and it'd be you know quite simple now inside there are latches so inside there's those latches that actually locks this cover down without a key because it will use your trunk door to lock everything in place. So as you can see, this is actually elevated. This top can actually carry 50 pounds of cargo if you evenly disperse it. You do wanna strap it down or get a net to hold whatever you put up here in place because you don't want 50 pound projectiles inside of your cabin. But that is an added bonus. Let's take a few quick measurements. From the lower part of the deck lid 
to the highest part of the trunk it is 18 and 3 eighths of an inch. The inside is right at 21 and 3 quarter to this higher section. And then the width is now 41 inches for the interior width. It was at its deepest right at right around 44 inches at its deepest. Again, there's a few things that would st stick out and cause a little less uh, space wall to wall. But again, now it's 41. So you can open this with or without the support down. With the support in place, you have 31 inches of access to your trunk. You know, I can actually see down perfectly. I don't have to bend over. Um, and you have, again, access to your cargo area. Very nice. One downside is you lose access for pass through. You can no longer, you know, put a surfboard in here or something. You'd have to put it on top or maybe on a rack on the roof. Um, but other than that, this is going to provide great security. Um, you know, one of the things that we faced was having the speaker in the back. We you know we weren't sure if we wanted to leave it out in the open exposed all the time. So this will give us some more security. Also, if you go from store to store to store and you have what you purchase in the back, you know, now it's safe and secure and out of sight, out of mind. And as we mentioned, we have had this installed in the last two days. It's the third time. So we've had a chance to drive it around. There's no rattles, there's no squeaks. I mean, it's got weather stripping all around and rubber. So it, it's actually wonderful. Um, Base Pro Go, like I said, just plugs right in. Now that we have this Molly panel system, we may go ahead and install this properly. It's been back here for two months now and it has never moved or rolled or shifted. It's been wonderful, but we may go ahead and mount it to the wall or something in the future. You may wonder how this affects the speaker. It's actually louder, I believe, because it traps in a lot of the frequencies, the air that's moving and almost makes a big metal box for it. So it actually sounds a lot louder, which is hard to believe because it was loud to begin with. We hope you found this install helpful. So far, we really like it. We've driven around a couple days with it on. I ordered some cup holders and just different storage things on here. Um, that way it'll kind of solve our cup holder problem, at least transporting bottles and everything to other places. Um, no rattling and I really love the security of it because now I can do more shopping without worrying if my stuff will get stolen. So as you saw and also heard from us, this is the third time we installed the cargo enclosure, but really it's that simple. It's not difficult whatsoever. You don't need to pay a dealer to put it in. You can do it. No, no, and, it, and you can do it in within an hour uh, easily. I think we just now did it in about 35 minutes uh, with recording. So again, it's very simple to install. I mean, it's very, very easy. With all that said, please give us a big old like for this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and go ahead and leave us a comment. I think we covered all of the bases with this, but if you have any more questions or just want to reach out, we love hearing from you. We have a lot more accessories to install over the next coming weeks. We're very excited to share those with you uh, and give you our honest review. So we'll see you next time. See ya.